Hello! Welcome! It is Wednesday, August 19th, 2020. And we're talking about flipping Amazon return pallets, how to make a hundred bucks an hour. The kind of things you have to do to make sure you can hit these numbers because you can easily lose money trying to do the pallet game. I have, and I'll talk about it in this video, but what I'll also talk about is how you can gear your business not to have a warehouse full of garbage like I do. What I should just do is throw it all away, but I'm not. Uh, thankfully, now I follow these steps and I'm buying way less stuff and making way more money. But again, I still have a full warehouse. Uh, so you're learning from experience here. You're learning from someone who has made mistakes, learn from those mistakes and uh, surpass that level. So what I'm gonna give you in this video, this live stream, some basic tips, and my hope is, as you watch it, either live right now, hint, hint, subscribe, <laughs> hit the bell icon, uh, you can ask questions in the live stream, or if you're watching a replay, which is totally fine, you can ask me questions in the comments, and I will do my best to answer them. We have a lot of people here right now. Thank you all so much. Let me know where you're from. I wanna, I wanna shout out some names. I wanna show some respect to the people here who, uh, who like to watch the videos, who have made money, who are in the Facebook group, who, um, you know, who are doing good stuff. Give the video a thumbs up. I just did. We have a lot of people, looks like. Do you like this five o'clock time? I do. I think it's a good time to do this. I'm finally awake. <laughs> We've got Thomas, who is first. Yes, sir, you're first. Michelle, Kev, Liquidation Warehouse, Social Valencia. I get the, fir I get the ZL right, but I, I always get the last part wrong, I think. Mason McLean, Stu, Terrell, or Terrell. Uh, Michelle again, Miss Mason. Uh, Shannon Brantley, Lisa, Louise, uh, Freedom Finds, Brandon Allen, Mike, Slice Keeper in Albuquerque, Tommy Boy in Irish Hills, Michigan, somebody from East Point, Michigan, Montgomery from Columbus, Ohio. We have Lisa C. here, too. Thank you all for coming. Thank you very much. Now, i got to share these links. And I encourage you to share them as well in your Facebook, on your social media. Say, hey, I'm watching this. I think it might help you. Especially if uh, they cut off a lot of the unemployment stuff. Especially if people are in even worse positions financially this winter and fall. Which I dread they will. I really hope we're not. But um, I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to have faith in uh, the decisions the people in power are making sometimes. Sometimes all you can do is have faith in yourself, and that is kind of the purpose of these videos. I want, to, uh, I want people to be able to make money. I want them to be able to take control, if only in a small way, hopefully a big way. There are lots of people in the Facebook group, uh, WBKL group on Facebook, lots of people there who are making tons of money. But um, not everyone has that uh, knowledge at their disposal. So hopefully these videos can help with that. We've got, let's see. <laughs> Michelle says, I finally got to see your boxing show. And seems people were really trying to have your enthusiasm. You were quieter than yourself. LOL. Uh, there's a lot more like, um, well, you know, when I'm just talking with one person, I'm not going to be yelling at them. This is more like a speech right now. And in the interviews, um, they've got microphones on you. And so if I were to, if I were to yell and I did yell sometimes, I would blow out the guy's eardrums and I would feel bad. <laughs> I don't want to hurt anybody. If you watch the show, I'm curious, what did you think? I watched the show. I thought last night's episodes were the best episodes yet. They certainly had uh, some of the better ratings, and I was pleased with it. Okay. Let's see what we have here. So how do you make 100 bucks an hour flipping pallets? And this might seem like an impossible task for a lot of people, but it is not impossible at all. It's very possible. It all uh, involves, though, 
really two things. One, you have to have uh, the capital to make this obtainable. And two, you have to have a plan what to do with the items you can't sell for profits or, or, um, or amounts of money that, uh, that make, your, that make the, the, the money worth your time. So how do we do this? And if you don't have the money to buy you know, a $2,000 pallet, I have other videos how to get up to that point. You can sell books, you can sell Dollar Tree stuff, you can sell VCRs, you can sell DVDs, you can sell video games. You can sell all that stuff and I have tons of videos about how to do it. Watch those videos. But now, what we're talking about is, um, is how you can buy pallets in a way that ensures you are using your time wisely. Michelle said, did he flip off the headphones and give you a look? I got to watch the first four shows. Last one was the best. Yes, that's exactly what happened. Uh, he came over and said, please stop doing that. And I said, I'll try. What I would also do is I talk with my hands a lot and sometimes I'd hit my chest if I was referring to myself. And the microphone is right here. And uh, if you hit a microphone with your hand, it makes a very loud noise. So uh, the, the sound guy did not, I was not, uh, the way that I communicate is not necessarily catered towards um, <laughs> towards microphones on your chest. So again, we have to understand to make a hundred bucks an hour, uh, how are we gonna do this? Well, how long generally uh, does a pallet take to go through? Usually I say a pallet's gonna take about four hours to go through. Uh, that doesn't take into account the time you are searching for it. And because everyone is going to have a different time it takes to find these pallets, I'm not going to include that in the hourly mark. I'm just saying from the moment the pallet gets in your door to the moment everything is listed, uh, how can you ensure your time is being spent wisely? Now this $100 an hour mark, you can't just force it to happen. You can't make pallets be worth more than they are. So potentially you might only be able to work six hours a week doing, well, eight hours a week doing pallets. That'd be like two pallets. Usually I say again, about four hours a pallet to get through it if you're alone, uh, if it's the kind of pallets I buy. So what kind of pallets don't I buy? Let's answer that first because that's gonna um, remove a lot of the, of the potential things you might be buying. Uh, a lot of the stuff that you might be brought in uh, because it seems interesting or because it's cheap or because, you know, whatever it is. The Texas Bandit says uh, the heat gun link has gone bad and your affiliate links, I'm aware of that, but that's such a low priority for me that I haven't got around to fixing it. Soon though, soon I will. Charles Levesque says, didn't think I would like the show, but I got into it after the first four episodes. Yeah, uh, I, I am not going to lie. Uh, I shouldn't say this because I'm on the show, but it got a rocky start. I thought it had kind of a rocky start, and I said, oh, geez, I don't know. I don't know if we're going to be able to do this, uh, if it's going to get any better. But it really, really, in my opinion, uh, just the way it's formatted, the way that they began to edit it, um, the, the, the risks involved became more, became more transparent. So I am, I'm a, I'm a fan now, I'm a big fan. I like, uh, I like What's It Worth. I, um, I like uh, Storage Wars. Storage Wars came back yesterday, I think, too. They killed us in the ratings, but uh, it's, uh, what, 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 uh, what someone was saying to me is the issue they had with Extreme Unboxing is there was no like direct competition. Um, so there's not like us like duking it out like they do at Storage Wars. But I, my hope is, and what I was really pleased with uh, on the um, on the on the first episode last night, is they let me like explain uh, what MSRP on bulk pallets means. Uh, I'm I'm sorry on um uh, that was actually B stock pallets, and so it is a little educational. That was certainly an educational aspect, and I got to explain how uh, Amazon FBA works, and so I I think that at least for my what I wanted to do, my intentions were to make this moderately uh, educational, and I think we did. And so the pallets that I don't buy, we wanna know that, right? What pallets don't I buy? What pallets should not you buy? Shouldn't you buy? <clears throat> Excuse me. And I think that's um, gonna be, well, one, we, all, we know this, salvage. I'm gonna write this down too so I don't repeat myself. Don't buy.
salvage pallets unless you absolutely know you can make money off of it. Right? Everything I'm saying, this is generalized beginner advice. This is not advice for someone who's making a lot of money, not advice for someone who has prior knowledge, not advice for someone who um, you know, who's try who who knows what they're doing. This is just basic general advice. Salvage pallets, uh, as I've explained before, are oftentimes broken. You have to be very mechanical. You have to have an ability to know what parts are worthwhile. Or, you know, in some odd cases, you have to know that it's not actually salvage. You have to be aware that it's a, a, a mislabeled auction or listing, whatever it is. Uh, that is not always necessarily going to be... I mean, most of the time, it's not even going to be an option. So I say if you're new... If you are even intermediate, don't buy salvage pallets. I say the same thing for scratch and dent. I have four 3D printers in my warehouse that I bought off a scratch and dent pallet from 2016. I keep telling myself I'm gonna fix them. I'm gonna buy the parts they're missing. I have not done that in four years. Maybe if you're more disciplined than me, you can buy salvage pallets, you can buy scratch and dent pallets, and you can make a lot of money off of them. Because oftentimes, yes, they are cheap. Oftentimes, yes, there is less competition for them. Oftentimes, yes, they are more plentiful on these marketplaces. But that doesn't mean you should jump the gun, jump the shark, pull the trigger, I don't know. There's a lot of idioms out there. That doesn't mean just because they're available and they're cheap, and they have a lot of upside, that doesn't mean it's calculated upside, that doesn't mean it's your best bet. So we don't, we don't buy salvage, we don't buy scratch and dent. Uh, I also would say don't buy automotive returns. Automotive returns, for those of you who don't know, are oftentimes uh, swapped out with the broken parts and sent back. It's a very, very commonplace thing in the auto repair industry. I don't know why. But it is. So that leaves us with um, just uninspected returns and uh, shelf pulls are new. Shelf pulls are new. Shelf pulls are gonna be new off the shelf. New is gonna be ideally, you know, sp sp supposedly brand new condition. And uninspected returns are gonna be everything. Everything at all. Uh, obviously, uninspected returns are going to take more time to go through. So that means you have to make more money per item, or more money off the whole pallet to make that uh, $100 per hour mark feasible. As I said earlier in the live stream, usually a pallet, if it's about between 20 to 50 items, I'd say, maybe more, maybe less. Uh, if they're new, certainly less, or more, I mean, um, 20 to 50 items. You can go through that and test that if there are returns. If you had like 50 VCRs, it would take you about four hours to go through and test them all. If you're, I guess if you're probably, that's probably a bit too uh, fast. Let's say uh, if you were to buy a random assortment of electronics, some CD players, some DVD players, some video game systems, and there's 50 in there, you should do about 15, 12 an hour, not very hard, uh, and suddenly in four hours, you've tested and listed all of them. So, you have to make sure that if you have 50 items, you have to make at least $10 profit, less than that, but you know what it is. Let's say 40 items. You have to make at least $10 profit per item to make 400 bucks in four hours. That breaks down to 100 bucks an hour. Is that feasible with uninspected returns? Yes, absolutely. But you want to take into account that there's going to be uh, some room for error. And I'll get into that in a little bit. I, I'll, that's a different tangent. But just now I'm trying to uh, create the paradigm that you can fill in your own details in that allows you to succeed at, honestly, whatever hourly mark you want. Maybe you want to make 10 bucks an hour, 50 bucks an hour, 30 bucks an hour. Who knows? You can take this. You can say, okay, it's going to take me four hours to go through 50 items. Will each of these items make me at least 10 bucks an hour or 10 bucks per item, five bucks per item, whatever it is. Obviously there's how fast will these things sell, but that is a topic for a different video. 
I'm gonna go through some of the questions now. We have we had a few pop up. Let's see. Be Beauty of Sound says uh, Seinfeld had a rocky start too, but look at what happened to them. They did. You're right. They, you're right. Kev says WBK. Thoughts on paying a scouter 30% commission after taking 20% off of the total profit for price fluctuations, returns, etc. So really, that means you are paying them 30% of 80%, which is only 24%, right? Is that how math works? Um, I mean, obviously, that's a way to make money on paper. Is that, uh, going, is that person going to be truthful with you? I don't know. I don't know the person. Is that person going to see how much money you're making and then do their own thing? I don't know. Whoa, Mike, you just sent something and it got deleted by the Google moderator team. I don't know what that what that meant, what that was. Um, try to write it again, but not the way you did. So uh, in order to answer your question about hiring a scouter, I think that, again, on paper, if they'll do it and they're trustworthy and they're reliable, that's a great idea. If you give them uh, strict parameters for, let's say it's Amazon, let's say... Uh, unless you were going to be paying them as the items sell, uh, I would assume in this scenario you're paying them up. I guess you're saying a commission, so it doesn't really matter in that case. Um, but if it isn't a commission, if it's up front, you're going to have to give them parameters. I would say nothing under a million for books, for example. Um, you, if, as long as you stay in the top 5%, you should be okay. And there are sales rank charts that will explain that stuff. But if you're not paying them until it sells, you know what, what? where's your risk? My only thought is that as they see the kind of money um, that they're making, they might go elsewhere. You just said that's your girlfriend? Well, unless she leaves you, uh, I think that's a pretty safe bet. It's always good to, to funnel in girlfriends and siblings and children and parents into your business because you, you can, uh, they're, much, they're much less likely to screw you over. <laughs> Maybe. May I shouldn't say that. Working with family is good until it's not good. Uh, Jody says, I love the show. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Michelle says, they need a Knobloch show. I agree. Go to the Facebook page. I want. I would love that. If you guys could go to the a &E Facebook page and just say positive things about the show, not about me, about the show, because there are a lot of people posting really negative things on the Facebook page, uh, on Twitter, on social media, and I think that it's kind of uh, making some of the other people on the show feel bad, and I don't like that. So I try and be positive, especially in the comment section on like you know a &E Facebook page. I encourage you to go there as well and say, hey, I like the show. I thought it was good. We need some positive feedback. Liquidation Warehouse says, uh, WBK, I loved your intellectual learning approach. Thank you. Attention to detail and discussing the takeaways. Great job. Did you unload all the books via FBA? Curious about the length of time uh, to profitable. So what I ended up doing, and they didn't have time to share this in the show, uh, is probably about 25% of those books uh, were under 3 million sales rank. I FBA'd everything under uh, 2 million, um, with the exception of the titles, like that one SEO book that I had 250 copies of. I did not FBA all those copies. Uh, I checked Keepa, excuse me, to see how fast it was selling. And they, you heard me say in the show, I think I can sell about 80 copies because I checked when the 2019 um, edition came out. It came out like just before the 2018 edition. So I figured the 2020 edition wasn't going to come out until like right around now, like fall, late summer 2020. And so I said, okay, based on um, assuming we're going to lose an, a, a, an average amount of sales per month because the 2019 books sell, I think I can sell 80. I ended up only selling about 40, I'd say. I had to destroy a pretty sizable amount of those books. But everything else that I meant to sell, I did sell. I actually sold one of the last copies of my book, of one of the books I got like two weeks ago. I FBM'd it. Uh, for a lot of the, the um, Donald Trump books, 
I kept those because my guess was they were going to sell more during the 2020 election cycle. I was right on that. Pretty cool to see that. Uh, they're not selling for a lot of money, but they end up going from being worth like nothing to being worth like five bucks. And so whatever, it isn't a huge win, but I'm down to, yeah, I'm, I'm out of them. I sold the last one a while ago. Uh, and so every that that episode was very accurate. I may have actually ended up making more money than was estimated. Um, I, I feel like a, a lot of times on these uh, reselling shows, people really overestimate the profits they're going to make. But I think for that book palette, I certainly was, I didn't overestimate at all. Um, I mean, you guys saw the MSRP. It was freaking huge. And so to pull three grand out of a $35,000 MSRP is not too crazy. That's not a hard and fast rule. I wouldn't say that you're going to get 10% of the MSRP on books every time, um, but certainly uh, very rarely will you get less than 10% if their items are in, you know, workable new condition. Uh, let's see. Uh, the length of time to sell. Most of the books sold in six months. Probably 80% of the books sold in six months, and the remaining 20% sold over the past year and a half. Uh, we filmed this last summer, someone asked. The Texas Bandit. Jolt Cola or Monster? Is Jolt Cola the one from Fallout? Because if it is, Jolt Cola. That, that's Nuka Cola. Um, I don't know what Jolt Cola is then. Uh, the energy drink, I've been drinking Stee's Energy recently because I don't like to have all the um, all the carbonation in that mo in the morning because it gives me heartburn. Let's see. What do we? Ha what else do we have? The Texas Bandit says, "I think that was Black Maxwell House. Scratch and Dent is the road to returns hell. Absolutely, Scratch and Dent is just salvage. I don't know why they call it anything else." Charles Levesque asks, manifested or no manifest? Preference? I try to stay with just tools. Home Depot with manifests are my best results. So I like no manifests because I'm a risk taker, I guess. Uh, but certainly if you're trying to have a more reliable source of income, more predictable, more routine profit, manifest is going to be, uh, gonna be your, your, your way to go. Thomas says, my first box, all items were listed as new, though some things were scuffed up a bit. I think it was great for a beginner, as 95% of the stuff was very easy to list. Absolutely, I love uh, newer shelf pulls. Anything with the original barcode on it is going to make it uh, make listing and researching way, 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 way easier. I'm talking like 10 times easier. Awesome possum sorry i bet you've answered this question before don't worry everyone starts off somewhere i have no problem answering questions uh repeating my answers as long as it is not you know to a, an insane level but i've missed it do you have a motorized disc cleaner for video games and do you feel it's worth the investment thank you i don't have a disc cleaner i do have a disc refinisher i have one now i used to have two I sold my second one for 300 bucks during the peak of the JFJ Easy bubble uh, during, during I think maybe April. Um, I know that they also make a disc cleaner. I don't have that. I don't know how it's any harder to use a terry cloth than that. I suppose if you're doing massive, massive amounts, it makes it easier. But for most people, I think a JFJ Easy Pro is fine for the casual reseller. Uh, once you begin selling, maybe I don't know. <coughs> A thousand discs a month it also depends how you source if you're sourcing from like thrift stores and pallets and used uh, and you're selling used DVDs it might make sense to, to, to buy like a, um, an, an icon or um, an Elm Pro USA Elm USA Pro at around like 300 discs a month those cost about a grand they're not cheap they're pretty expensive um, but they are much more reliable and uh, hands-free as opposed to a JFJ Easy Pro. I have mine right here. For those of you who don't know, this is what it is. It's a little PVC box. Uh, and I made videos on how to, how to use this. I have them on my, on my channel. You put the disc there. There's a sanding pad in here that rotates and a buffing pad as well. 
and uh, it can finish, it can refinish most discs in, you know, two or three minutes. That's how long it takes per person or per disc. Hey, we just got a super chat. Best for less. Five bucks. And if you guys are new to the channel, every time I get a super chat, we do this. And um, every time we hit 50 bucks in aggregate donations, you know, so 50, 100, 150, we blow the money horn. Thank you, best for less. We had some more questions. Uh, I wanna get back to those. So uh, my end answer to that is, I'd say if you, if you can get one of these JFJ Easy Pros for 150 bucks, I'd say buy one. If you can get one for cheaper, certainly buy one. Um, if you're hard up for cash, it's not necessary, although certainly it will lower your overall potential to earn money. Um, but I wouldn't buy one of the expensive, expensive ones until I was making, you know, probably at least a thousand bucks a month, personally. Uh, MB3 Film says Borax is selling for $8.99 on Amazon for a pound. However, I can get uh, four pounds for five bucks. So I could resell it for about 36 bucks. Is that a good flip? So uh, if you are able to sell it, certainly there are certain brands that are restricted on Amazon. Um, and if you can find a listing for a four pound bag or box that sells for that price, um, that's good. You can't just buy a four pound bag of borax and then like you're you know, a crack dealer, pour it into, into one pound uh, <laughs> Ziploc bags. You couldn't do that. Um, I would say to ship a four, you could probably ship it. I don't know if that's too big for a flat rate mailer, but certainly it's not going to cost more than 15 bucks to ship. Um, if you, if you really wanted to do that. So let's do the math. Let's say you have a 15% Amazon fee out of 36 bucks. That is, uh, about 360 plus 180 is 540. So you're down to 30 bucks minus the buy cost is 25 bucks minus shipping is 10 bucks. So you're going to make about, you're going to be about doubling your investment. So yeah, in theory, it is a good way to do it. Although I wouldn't say, um, I wouldn't say that it's without knowing more. I can't tell you if it's a good idea or not. Mike says it was about my ROI criteria. I look to go for 100%, including fees and shipping minimum $50, $50 minimum gain. I think that's a good strategy. I think if you are making at least 50 bucks per item, you're gonna make a lot more money than someone who's just trying to make $5 or $10. Initially, you might see a dip in your sales, but a year later, you're gonna be in a much better place. Uh, the person who has their name upside down, good advice. I'm just getting here now. Where do I get these Amazon returns from Amazon? You can go on bstocksupply.com. You can go on liquidation.com. You can buy them all there. Uh, let's see. You keep being the winner on the show. Good job kicking everyone's ass. I think that's why I'm on fewer episodes than uh, some of the other people is because I was very adamant about not buying pallets for the show that I wouldn't buy for my business. I can't speak for anyone else, I don't know, but for me personally, I said no to way, 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 what, what, it would, what it would be is they would say, hey Blake, we wanna film you next week. Here's five pallets that um, we can show on the show because they can't show like Disney merchandise, they can't show like QVC merchandise. They'd go, hey, here's five pallets you, we, that we could uh, potentially film, Can you buy, will you buy any of these? And I would say, no, probably not. Um, because a lot of the times they didn't fit my business model or they weren't profitable or I just didn't feel good about them. Um, so I was very, very particular about uh, about what I was buying. And I think that's why I'm making some, I'm, on the show, I'm making decent money. Eric in Ohio says, do you have a dock on your warehouse? Down here, I do not. But if you watch my videos from a couple of years ago, when I was doing bulk books, I did have a dock in that warehouse. Josh Malvito, just signed up for your Facebook page after two months of watching your uploads. Thanks for your contributions. Jose, I said Josh, your name's Jose. Jose, thank you for uh, being a part of the group and part of the community. I bought two boxes of looks like Walmart returns for $2.25 from Bulk and I am not impressed. 
I will maybe make my money back, but I probably won't get toys again unless I see a super deal. So don't be so, I, without knowing the items you have, I can't speak with full confidence, but uh, toys are only gonna go up in value over the next few months. Uh, and certainly what you could potentially do to save on shipping is bulk up toys together. What I usually say about bulk is, it seems to me that they pretty much, they make the boxes themselves. And it seems to me that they have uh, between like a 40 and 60% profit margin made for you. So if you spend 100 bucks, I think you'll make 60 bucks profit. That's kind of how I see bulk functioning. Um, so if you spent 225 on both of those, I would bet that you can probably make $300. It might take some time. You might have to price your items higher and wait for the people who are kind of bottoming out the market to sell their shit. But I wouldn't doubt uh, if you're just kind of seeing a lull or, a, or a, a peak, depending on your perspective in the market right now. Uh, let's see. Dominic, how can I do this? When can I start? 100 day for pallet returns. Dominic, that's what this video is about. Uh, the way you do it is you buy pallets. They get sent to your house. You go through them. You sell the items, either in flea markets or Amazon or eBay, whatever it is. John Arnold. You're not the John Arnold from Traverse City, are you? What's going on, WBK? What do you do with VCR DVD combo duds? Do you try and repair them or sell them off for parts? Thanks for all your help. I used to try and repair them. That was a failure. I used to try and scrap them. That was a failure. Now I cut the cords and toss them in the dumpster. I don't want to put them, I used to put them back at thrift stores. Um, but I stopped doing that because it ended up being where they would get so many of them uh, from me that they wouldn't be putting out the merchandise I want to buy. And it was kind of like sabotaging myself. So now I toss them out of there. Um, I cut off the parts I can scrap. But oftentimes, if it's a metal body VCR or if it's a DVD VCR combo with a lot of gold in it, I do scrap those still. Um, but for most plastic body VCRs, um, I'm just tossing them out after I cut out the cord uh, because the copper, there were, I don't know what they're, I have, a, I have a trash can full of copper cords right now. And I take them over to the scrap place and I get money for it. Um, I guess I should also say too that the number of dud VCRs I'm buying are far, far, far less. Um, the, the caveat with why I stopped taking so much effort into making sure they're getting recycled or whatever is because I began testing VCRs more and more in stores. And so I'm buying less duds as of about two years ago. I used to think that it was okay just to buy them, uh, get them home and test them out, um, or even sell them without testing them. And that was fine like four or five years ago on Amazon. Uh, there was a lot more uh, generous policies towards sellers on Amazon's part. So if you got bad feedback, all you had to do was refund the person. You were out like 20 bucks on shipping, but it didn't get you banned. Um, the way Amazon has changed over the, I should not be playing with that pen. This is a nice, this is an expensive shirt um, or a valuable t-shirt. The way it works now is if you just blindly buy VCRs and don't test them uh, and sell them to customers, it's very, very likely you'll get banned, even though that may have not have been the case three or four years ago. Just a trend that I've noticed personally uh, maybe I'm wrong, but just from my personal experience. Uh, let's see. Dominic says, when you get a minute, can you let me know how to start doing this ASAP? Uh, it's, you got to watch the video, Dominic. This is not a personalized live stream for you. Um, how do I get started? You, what do you think? You Google, I mean, like, what do you want to know? Do you want me to like tell you how to like open a bank account? Tell you how to get a warehouse? Your your questions are very, very generalized and vague uh, and kind of like unnecessarily demanding. So I, I think you should just be patient. Maybe watch my videos for a few months. And after that, like the person who said after two months, I joined the Facebook group, take that strategy. Um, because that person certainly knows a lot more uh, than they would have two months ago. Mike says, if you could explain PayPal and eBay's goofy convoluted hidden fees or make a video on that, it'd be awesome. I'm not going to because I think that it's just because of people who are getting managed payments 
uh, sent to their PayPal, and pretty soon everyone's gonna have managed payments sent to their bank account. And so that like double tax you see, um, where you're paying like uh, some sort of transaction tax on the payment transfer, that's gonna be gone because your bank is not gonna take that out. I that's I mean that's my understanding of it. I could be wrong. I don't know, but that's my understanding of it. Jody says on the show when they are using comps for pricing. It seems like they are using new prices. Would they be listing them as new or used like new? So a lot of the people have like flea markets or booths like that. So they take new price minus like 40%. Um, if I get a new item off a pallet, depending on the brand, depending on the product, I might sell it as new. I might list it as new or I might not. Uh, certainly like the more in-demand products, the more uh, products with uh, litigious brand teams, I'm not going to list those as new, but if it's an item that's functionally new, that is potentially obsolete, uh, then I will sell it as new, and I have never had a problem with that um, because I'm very, very particular and meticulous about these new items being new. The reason that I recommend no one else does that is because it takes a, kind of a more discerning eye. That's why I don't sell, I mean, I, I would... I guess I should, I should make this caveat. The things that I would sell as new are like boxed things. Like if I got a, a pallet of action figures and there was no dog ears or whatever, that could be sold as new. If it's like VCRs and dinged up boxes from 25 years ago, no, certainly not. Um, and just the good generalized advices don't do that. Are they doing that? I'm not sure. They sell things a lot differently than me. Uh, I know there's always the question like, oh, well, Amazon says this. Amazon says you can't do that. But Amazon also says if you don't have invoices for used items, you can get screwed over too. So it's kind of the thing that they have just to protect themselves um, or to put themselves in a position where they can always side with the buyer because they're a buyer-centric company. Obviously, uh, if you abuse that, you're going to get screwed over. But as long as you're delivering people um, what they want, I don't think you're in a lot of risk. Obviously, that's there's a little bit of gray area there, but that's just my personal opinion. Best for less, how do I get ungated on DVDs again? Watch my video, how to get ungated on DVDs. I explain all of it. Dominic says, fees also, why for them transferring payments and paperwork? That's ridiculous, like a bank charging maintenance fees. They do it because uh, of all these goddamn states who think it's okay for them to charge sales tax uh, on online transactions. And so don't blame PayPal, blame your goddamn state government. Uh, it's not PayPal's fault. They're just following the rules that have been enforced upon them. Diane Gannon says, I have two battery packs for Coleman Power tool set. They are new in package from 2003. Should I open and try to see if they charge? If they work or chance it with them in the package to sell, what I would say for those specifically is they're probably expired. Uh, I would say list them as like new condition on eBay. Be very, very, and then in the title say 2003 expired. That's what I would say. Um, I wouldn't sell them on Amazon. No way in hell. Ricky Hart, do you stick to specific stores when buying returns? Amazon, Walmart, etc. Or do you look around? I look all around. If it's a good deal, it's a good deal. I don't care where it's from. The Texas Bandit, your opinion on how long until all the part-time and newbies become discouraged and leave the market? I don't think they're flooding the market. I don't believe that. I've been making these videos for years. If the newbies, there are more people who have watched my YouTube channel than watch the TV show. So if there have been newbies in the market, they've been there for three or four years. Renee, hello from Arizona. Welcome, Renee. What do you make of eBay prompting sellers to use other services besides USPS? Um, I have not had that. I use Pirate Ship when I'm on my eBay sale, so I haven't seen that. Uh, but whenever I can, whenever the price is similar or whenever... Um, it's a valuable item. I use UPS or FedEx. In my opinion, they are vastly superior in almost every single way. Uh, we're, I was I was in a, in a group with a lot of other like high volume sellers, 
And we were saying, like, yeah, we had way, way, way more delays in, like, March with USPS than we do now. So I think there's a lot of, like, misinformation and, and uh, just, like, dem demagoguery going on about USPS right now. And I don't like it. With the direction Amazon is going with the new changes, do you think Amazon is trying to weed out some third-party sellers? I think they're trying to have more large, high-volume third-party sellers use uh, 3PLs. I think they're trying to um, be less of a storage facility and more of a mail sorting facility, if you get my drift. Will that weed out third-party sellers? Absolutely, but that's more of a consequence than an intention. Uh, let's see. Beauty of Sound says, Dominic, I'm following the South Park plan for success. Step one, watch a lot of WBK videos. Step two, dot, dot, dot. Step three, profit. That's like, there's an always sunny joke like that too. It's like something, something, something. Step three is like bro down. It's, it's, it's like a VC joke. Venture capital joke. Flippin' Rick says, what's up? Shipping and watching the live. Flippin' Rick, good to have you here. Mason McLean says, South Dakota, South Dakota screwed us all with Wayfarer versus, <laughs> verth. Wayfarer versus South Dakota. Wayfarer versus South Dakota. And uh, they certainly did set a precedent. That's true. I don't know if they screwed us all. I think that there's a lot, it's a lot bigger than that. Just the way that, um... The way that precedent gets transferred around and the way that politicians use uh, examples like this to bolster their ranks, I think it's a lot bigger than just one state making their own decision on how they're going to moderately raise funds. I think there's a whole um, institutional issue with the way politicians uh, propagate their ideas. There is no sales tax in Oregon. Yeah, that's a great thing about the state. Matt Scoggins says, dude, what's up from North Carolina? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Best for Less says, okay, do you think buying toys from Burlington and Marshalls and holding them till Q4 is a good idea? I see a lot of clearance stuff. That is a real risk you're taking. That's a real risk because you don't know if after they're done with them, if they're going to liquidate those toys, you know, because you're not buying every toy from Marshalls in the country. So maybe you buy all the toys, you know, within 100 miles of you and all the other stores liquidate on, you know, liquidation.com or whatever. In that case, it'd be a bad idea. Um, it's a big risk. I am not doing it personally. So I would recommend you don't do it. But there are people who are doing it. Uh, and certainly, like, if you're buying all the Lego sets, Lego sets very rarely stay bottom out in value they might go down but they always go back up eric in ohio says do you have a monthly warehouse sale similar to resale rabbit no if not how to get rid of your challenging inventory i don't it's a problem i have it all here it's just sitting on shelves around me um i go through a shelf or two every day you know once or twice a week uh, and I either take things to a local auction or I just straight up throw them away or I auction them off on eBay. I don't like having people in my building, so I don't want to have a warehouse sale. DJ Crazy Jimmy, what new changes is Amazon doing? I think I missed what they are. Something about third-party sellers. I think what's in reference was um, the inventory performance index changes. Uh, and how they are changing how third-party sellers can FBA stuff, uh, as well as the continual increase of brand and product gates that appears to occur uh, as time marches on. Mike, do you ever consider applying some of these principles in flipping with real estate? Same concept, bigger numbers. I have. Uh, I did it along. I did it six years ago, and I lost a shit ton of money. And so I'm waiting until I have more money in the bank to do it again. But right now, my brothers and I are looking at some property up in northern Michigan. And we think it'd be cool to uh, buy like 80 acres along a river and put tiny houses along the river and, and rent those out um, as like summer vacation rentals. 
So certainly I am thinking about like, okay, how do we get the most revenue for the time spent? How do we get the most revenue per, you know, dollar invested or, uh, you know, uh, renewable, I guess you might want to call it. It isn't, you know, per square foot of space, but it's the same kind of concept where you have uh, a fixed supply of time and space, but you're trying to maximize the, the money you make. Uh, Michelle says, listen, you like a podcast, just dropped off more FBA books. Good for you. I'm like six months behind on, um, <laughs> on taking the video audio and uploading it to my podcast. I have a podcast. I haven't uploaded it in forever. I got to do that again. I'm I, that's, I have to hire someone to do it. I guess that's what I should really do. Matt Scroggins says, I don't use Keepa or camel app. The sales rank when scanning with the Amazon seller app and review numbers still test as good of a story. So if you have uh, memorized what good sales rank are per category, you can certainly just do that. Uh, the reason I use Keepa is almost only in higher sales rank electronics and books that I can buy in bulk because I want to see uh, with relative accuracy how many I can buy to sell over the next six months, year, two years, whatever. Hey, best for less, 10 bucks. You know what that means? That means we are only $35 away from the money horn, which I'll have to find if someone donates money. It's right there under the table. Uh, and for you, we give you a big heron. It's a, this is a heron or a crane. I always get it wrong. A bird bell. Michelle says, supposedly, there are great people in Guam. Is it? I don't know what you're talking about. I've, uh, I don't know what that is. I mean, I know what Guam is, um, but I don't know what you mean. Richard says, do you think reselling is a good side hustle while working a full-time job? Richard, I wholeheartedly do. It's a great idea for a side hustle. Beauty of Sounds uh, says, I'm yard selling my difficult non-moving stuff only because my sister doesn't mind sitting outside in the yard all day. Gotta love family. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Come on, guys. Bless Blake for the knowledge. You don't. There is no, no expectation of donations uh, on these live streams. What I, if you are happy that I'm doing this, what I ask you to do is share the videos. That will end up, if we're talking about like long-term revenue, the more you share the videos, that's gonna make me a lot more money um, if they become if they become subscribers and they watch my video every day for five years. That's gonna make me a lot more money uh, than a donation would. And so please, if you're worried about that, uh, sharing videos is a very helpful way to do that. And even just liking it, liking it helps too. Which reminds me, thumbs up the video. CJ Spenno says, hey Blake, I'm at the liquor store next door. Don't mind if I block your door, LOL. Oh my God, I would, pull out, I would pull out a weapon and brandish it. Just kidding, that's illegal. I would never break the law. Thomas Watson says, I've been sourcing a ton of electronics lately, DVD, VCR combos, Blu-rays, Betamax, etc. What Amazon rankings would you recommend staying under for electronics? A good rule of thumb is 350,000. That should sell in six months, probably. Hopefully less, but no longer than six months. Uh, and I'm buying up to one million in some cases. But that's rare exceptions. And I'm not FBAing them at a million for sure. Uh, Eric in Ohio, from a fellow Lakers fan, who is your favorite best Laker? My, mag, mine are Magic and Kobe. I like Shaquille O'Neal a lot. Uh, I like Magic Johnson a lot. I like Kobe a lot. You know, I don't really have favorites. I, I, uh, I'm not the kind of person who has a favorite anything. I, I like a lot of stuff. I uh, have an eclectic taste. I like Kareem. You know, the, there, there's a person who was a very, uh, who had a whole career after basketball. I mean, obviously Shaq did. Kobe would have if he hadn't died in the tragic accident. Um, Magic Johnson does as well. He was like, he was way in the, he was in the front office for a long, long time. But Kareem was uh, um had a very diverse set of skills and i respect that firecrest 
my VCR DVD combos dried up. Now I move on to mugs. There's always something to sell. Absolutely. If you learn about niches, if you learn about the kind of things people want, there's always going to be money for you somewhere. Lakers going to win tomorrow. Maybe. Maybe. I think so. Probably. Thomas Watson, what about printer rankings? That I cannot tell you off the top of my head. I don't know. Um, I've sold printers. Are they? Well, because it, 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 are printers a subcategory of office supplies? I don't remember. I don't sell a lot of printers, so I can't just um, I can't just elucidate on that right now. Lisa C says magic since he went to Michigan State. Yeah, that's why I like him too. Magic Johnson and my grandpa went to the same high school. They went to uh, Lansing Sexton in um, in Lansing. <laughs> uh, I love how there's like this running meme about how mad I get when people uh, blo block block me in. Mason McLean says, such a good word, elusive. Did I, did I use it right? I think I did. It means to like speak knowledgeably, right? Clear, explain. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, I can't do that about, about printers right now. Uh-oh. You know what just happened? My, my computer just froze. So we're going blind for the next few minutes. Um, what is the meaning of life, Blake? The meaning of life, I think, I think is to create things. If you look at the universe um, as reality, right? So I'm talking about a materialistic physical plane. If you look at the universe from a materialistic view, the only things that have any sort of uh, continuity to them, any sort of uh, sustenance or, or maintainability are going to be the things that uh, are self-propagating. So however you believe the universe or existence began, it began when zero became one. Uh, and one became two, and two became four, et cetera, et cetera. If you look at you know the human life, you look at the uh, you know in, in, inside inside the body, the biological process, uh, the gamete splits and becomes two and three and four. I think it's the gamete. I don't know. I'm not a biologist, but the the, the initial human cell boop, buds like that. And so, I think from a, a, a philosophical point of view, uh, if you're one who's prone to to nihilism as I am. Uh, you can begin to establish this sense of like surreal nihilism or, or surreal absurdism, even more more accurately, uh, where you begin to look at things and say, okay, to me, what matters to me? What do I define as successful? What do I define as progress? And I think uh, using the physical world as any sort of indicator for that um, lends credence to the idea that the idea, uh, <laughs> the idea, the idea, the idea, that uh, the concept of propagation, the concept of you know, expansion and growing, um, and and in human terms, making a name for yourself, making uh, this sort of positive legacy, where you create things that in turn create more things. Uh, I think that that's certainly arguable as um, the the meaning of life, the purpose of life. So that that's my my two cents on that. And the reason I felt okay uh, 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 talking about this, um, you know, polemicizing, is because again, my computer, my computer uh, froze, and so I have to stall for time. And there's nothing better. There's no better way to stall for time uh, than just talking about random philosophical bullshit because it's purely speculative, right? It's just my opinion, man. <laughs> Just your opinion, man. We have any big Lebowski fans in the live stream? Any of you? Any of you at all? I I, I really wish that people let's see would uh would appreciate what just a stellar time stall I pulled. It was only for a minute or two, but um, <laughs> it was not good. Okay, it looks like we have the live stream going back up again. And if you have any questions about anything, I know I just talked about kind of bullshit for a few seconds, but if you're curious about you know, for example, uh, selling books, selling, I can't really talk about clothing that much, but um, I've sold clothing, I've sold books, I've sold, uh, what else have I sold? DVDs, video games, I've sold some antiques, I've sold some collectibles. The Texas Bandit says, I'm boring the shit out of you. How can I bore the shit out of you when what I was, when I, what I was saying was purely 
uh, just my, just brain food. If anything, I'm boring the shit into you. <laughs> uh, what types of items do you sell FBM? Right now, everything's FBM until, uh, you know, COVID stuff calms down uh, because I don't really trust the, the delivery times for um, Amazon Prime items. And I don't want to be screwed out of my money. And so I FBM pretty much everything. Uh, so it's not really what I am or I'm not. What I will do through this exercise of doing more FBM things is um, I'll probably start buying more, excuse me, high rank electronics uh, and more high rank DVDs and books. And by high rank, I mean like above 2 million for books now, uh, above 100,000 um, for DVDs and above 350K for electronics. Uh, Charles Levesque says, dude hates the Eagles. Who hates the Eagles? Oh, Neil Tyson DeGrasse, probably. <laughs> Ricky Hart says, 87 people now know the meaning of life if they didn't all already. Certainly you can substitute your own meaning because it isn't like anyone's right. There's not like an answer key that we have to uh, fill out our, our opinions on when we die or something. Everyone is just trying their best. Ray Dalio has similar views on the universe, says, Mike, I don't know who that is, but I will look them up. I hope they're not a bad person. Are they like a murderer or something? Investor and entrepreneur, American philanthropist. I got to get money like him before my ideas become mainstream, I guess. Uh, have you sold out? Have you sold old Microsoft software before? Just picked up a load of Office 2007 PC DVDs. I've sold like one or two on eBay, um, but not. I can't recall if they went for a lot or, uh, or if they were bad or what. I don't always like selling old software like that because um, in 2017, I got my, I got, I didn't get suspended, but I got uh, an IP complaint from, from Webroot Software uh, and they, because I was selling a Webroot virus program um and they said you can't sell i was even selling it as new i was selling it as used and they said you can't sell this and so that's kind of um i've pumped the brakes on a lot of software since then i ended up calling the company and i was like hey can you guys remove this and they were very very friendly about it but they had contracted out some legal division and it was kind of bullshit so i just stay away from that all right we've got five dollars again from Miss Valencia. Ready? Thank you very much. That puts us $31 away from the money horn. So if you're feeling generous and you want to buy me probably with tip for ciders this weekend, send me $31. Mason McLean says you can use sandpaper to remove red dots on Dollar Tree books. Yeah, you certainly can. Uh, but I just I recommend not even messing with it. Poto Kai Kai says, love that I'm finally catching the live streams. I'm sure you've heard people compare you to Seth Rogen in a good way. You are definitely entertaining and charismatic. Some of the other sellers and then nothing else. So uh, I people do say that a lot. I personally do not see the... Um, the uh, the comparison between me and Seth Rogen at all, uh, but people say that I laugh like him, and I guess we probably do have a lot. Uh, you know, our, our families certainly come from the same area of the world, or at least part of our families do. You know, ancestrally. Oh, some of the other shows are hard to sit through. Well, I'm glad you you're enjoying this, Poto Kai Kai. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Ricky Hart asks, when selling higher value items and collectibles, is there anything you do to minimize getting ripped off or scammed? I'm talking about people sending back fakes and stuff. So what I do on higher value electronics is I put these one of these bad boys on them. It's a warranty void if removed and they have numbers on them. And I take a picture of it when I send it out and I use that for my safety complaint uh, on Amazon. And I've had to file three over the past six months, I guess. And um, I have won one. I lost one because it was my fault. 
and I lost one because I didn't really know the rules. So I refunded someone too early, and I lost a complaint that way. And on a second one, someone said some stupid bullshit to me, and I did not respond to it in the messages. And if you don't respond in the messages to a, to a, any, any message at all, uh, and they file a claim on you or a refund or whatever, and you file a safety complaint, you're going to lose it automatically. I learned that after the fact. Kev sent us two bucks. You know what that means? Two bucks closer to that cider. We are only $29 away. Bingo. Frugalisti says the dude abides. The dude does abide. DJ Crazy Jimmy, how about book sales right now in the pandemic? Going to sales where they can rummage through used books is hard to find right now. Certainly it is. I'm not doing that, so I can't really... I can't really, um, I can't really do that. Oh yeah, uh, Valencia had a question. Do niche businesses do better in a good or bad economy? That is a hard question to ask. So let's think through it. In a good economy, people are spending more money so they have more time to pursue their niche interests. So I would say in a good economy, everything is better. But by the same token, while they might not do better in a bad economy, I would say if someone has a hundred bucks to spend for luxury items, um, they're much more likely to spend that in a niche they enjoy. Uh, and I'm talking about niches now as interests, but we can also talk about niches um, as this, I just a specialized thing. So let's say you're in like the used auto parts niche. That's gonna do better in a bad economy. Let's say you're in, um, you know, repairing vacuum niche. That's gonna do better during a bad economy. Let's say you're in uh, used luxury goods. Maybe not, I don't know. Um, but certainly it's not the kind of thing where good economy, bad economy, um, it's always gonna be you know fine or bad. Uh, it just, we have to think about these in ways where we understand who our customers are and how our customers are going to react during trying economic times. So if the niche that you have is one where people with a lot of money, um, you know, are gonna buy it, I guess, I don't know, like if it's like luxury jewelry, probably good economy's better. But if, if you're in a niche where it's more about like a, a very specific hobby um, or a very specific interest, I would say, although it may not do better during a bad economy, it certainly will uh, give you less uh, variability in the amount of money you bring in month to month because let's say you're selling like goth like metal spikes um, people who are buying those are buying those because they want them they like how they look and so if they have the money to spend maybe the price will go down a small amount but I wouldn't imagine we're gonna see much variance in those very specific niches uh, the way you would with like I don't know Adidas shirts or Tommy Bahama shorts, for example. And then Tom, thank you for reminding me because I totally did miss that question. Uh, appreciate that. Kyle Hancock says, hey Blake, what do you think of Hot Wheels from 1990s, 2010 newish and new package? I have a line on about a thousand of them to sell on eBay, of course. Do you have any advice pricing in the blind? Every time I have seen Hot Wheels, at thrift stores, at garage sales, wherever, they're never profitable. Or they're never being bought. I don't know. I don't know. I don't understand the Hot Wheel market. I've tried to learn. I've talked to guys who make a lot of money selling Hot Wheels, but I just don't get it. I don't, I'm not a car guy. And so like all cars of a similar size and shape look the same to me. Uh, a lot of the times there's like collector's editions or limited runs or like, oh, this car got put in its box upside down and I just don't have the eye for that. And so I don't, you know, I guess I would say if I was buying Hot Wheel cars blind and I really, really had to, the way I would make money off of that is by paying like 15 cents a car. And I would say, okay, even though I don't know shit about these, I can pay almost nothing for them and then, worst case scenario, I'm still gonna make some cash. Um, I would not, I wouldn't go into it thinking that I'm gonna have some big winners there, because in my experience looking up cars from that era, I've never had any big winners. 
Sean Mac Fun and Games says, yeah, but AdSense takes 30% and there's taxes. About Well, I don't give a shit about that. I mean, we're just, everyone pays taxes. It's I don't like taxes, but they're kind of unavoidable. And the 30% that AdSense takes, it is what it is. It's, it, it makes it a lot more fun if I just say you're buying me a beer. Because that's like a, a point of connection between us. You drink beer, well, cider. You drink beer, I drink cider. Uh, you know, who cares if I'm actually paying it for myself and it's, you know, more, um, more, uh, metaphorical or more, what's the word for, uh, f not figurative, but it's more just like a, a token of good faith. That's fine with me. I don't care. You know, I'm not like relying on this for my alcohol, but I don't drink a lot of alcohol as it is. So it's okay. Thomas Morello says organic growth is steady, but slow. I started with just free stuff around my house and reinvested and now getting into small wholesale lots. Should I invest more funds or creep, keep growing organically? Without knowing the details of your financial life uh, and your obligations, I would say keep growing organically. Um, but certainly if you have a point where you're looking at, the bank, at your bank and you're saying, man, I have more money than I thought I would, um, then it's time to start making some, some bigger deals. Tom the English Picker, I've been scammed by the same guy on Amazon many, many times over the years, and Amazon said it was just cost of doing business on the platform and I can't block them. I never heard of a safety complaint. So it's not, it's S-A-F-E-T, and you don't block them, you get your money back on FBM um, um, sales, transactions. Uh, and what you should do, if you certainly know the person's name, um, I don't know how things work uh, were in the country you live in, but in the United States, I know people who have filed restraining orders against uh, buyers. I know people who have um, filed criminal reports who have tried to take these guys to small claims court in lower, uh, lower amounts. And it isn't always successful, but one, it scares the person, and two, if you do win, then you have an enormous, um, you know, personal victory. I don't think, the reason I haven't done that is because I don't think it makes sense money-wise, but there are steps you can take if you are really pissed off. DJ Crazy Jimmy, appreciate you. Uh, always enjoy watching the live stream. Gotta go. See you next time. See you, DJ Crazy Jimmy. Gabriel Mendiola says, how, how much do you use keeper tax regarding your business? Uh, I use them to take, uh, to make a transaction of all my purchases. And then I say business, personal, business, personal, whatever it is, um, because they have a, a, a decent setup. It's really more for like freelancers. I kind of did that just because it has what I need. Uh, and I can export the files and go, oh yeah, here's what it is. Um, there's other ways to do it too. I like them just because I haven't had a problem with it. Um, I, but I, it isn't like a huge part of my business. What else do we have? You know, I think that's, uh, that's pretty much it. I can keep talking about, uh, flipping pallets if you guys want. Um, so I, I think what I, what I'll do now is let's, let's, uh, Oh, geez. Tom, the English picker, says, a well-known scammer in the community. He buys from FBM and FBA sellers to upgrade his stock and sells the scammed items on his own Amazon store. Oh, and, they, and he return, does he return broken ones then? Or is he just like kind of like roundabout way drop shipping? Um, upgrade, what do you mean? Uh, I'm not sure what I know by that, but when you say upgrade to stock. Because if if it if he's just drop shipping, oh sends back worse or broken, yeah that's that's bad. That's return fraud. That sucks. Do you know the person's name? I guess maybe you shouldn't say it. Um, but that sucks. I would want to be aware of that. I've never had that issue. Um, I wouldn't like that though. Poto Kai Kai says, "Do you flip VHS that are already opened viewed?" I sell four VHS tapes a year, um, and it doesn't really matter to me. I mean, I'll, I'll test them all, so um, 
I wouldn't just if I had I wouldn't sell a VHS tape unless it's worth like 25 bucks or I really liked it in the case of like the Beatles help VHS tape uh, and if they're worth that much then for me it's worth testing it I've got a million VCRs here so why not Al Ruiz says time to run to the post office thanks for all the great info leaving the stream up because my doggos love your voice <laughs> hey dogs <laughs> what's up Tatiana Beatty says sorry just coming in where do you get your pallets from? So I buy my pallets mainly. Uh, I've got guys I know who sell them. You can go to liquidation.com. Uh, I buy from B Stock Supply and bstock.com a lot. I buy from bulk occasionally. I buy from quick lots occasionally. Um, I have other videos on all of this where the, the, the websites are in the description. So go through my channel, go through my uploads, look at the titles of the videos, uh, and you should be able to see what they are. Jesus Christ. Goes under the name Adian Lopez. The police know and has scammed me for hundreds and others for thousands. It's a common scam from others, but doesn't stop me. That sucks. I've, I've never heard about this guy, but thank you for letting me know, Tom. That's really, really shitty behavior. Beauty of Sound says, enjoy the cider. <laughs> that was a hiccup noise. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> thank you, Beauteous, and we are... $24 away from me enjoying some delicious alcohol on my trip to beautiful northern Michigan this week. I'm not doing a live stream Friday, by the way. No live stream Friday. Uh, I'll be on a vacation. Let's see. Blank VHS tapes still sealed our new great resale item. Pick them up for cheap at thrift stores. Absolutely. Blank media of really any sort, if you can get it for cheap enough, is always going to be a good flip. CJ Spendo says, hey, Blake, I'm a postal worker at a processing facility in Philadelphia. It's bad. Oversized packages are very, very backed up. That's not good. That's not good. Um, that, that would explain why I haven't been seeing delays, too. Because all my VCRs, all the things that I think are more valuable, I do UPS or FedEx. I'm only doing first-class mail, and I sell a lot of first-class mail stuff. Um, so that would really make, that would explain why some people are seeing so many delays and I'm not seeing any delays, um, on my USPS packages. So you heard it live from CJ, uh, oversized packages are backed up. That sucks too, man. That really sucks. Philadelphia and Pennsylvania at large is having some real shit being thrown at them. I saw that, um, I'm not going to go into the details because I don't want to get anybody talking about politics. But um, there's lawsuits being um, there's lawsuits being uh, filed against like voter drop boxes and like who was allowed to monitor them in Pennsylvania. It really sucks. My mom says Magic went to Everett High School, so I was wrong. Magic did not go to Sexton. He went to Everett. My bad. Uh, Lisa C says love to youp. Lived there for 10 years. I'm going to Tequamanon. I'm going to Chris Point Lighthouse. We're going to Munising. We're going to Marquette. We're going to Escanaba. It's going to be great. CJ says they installed a new machine that kicks out most of the packages that we used to be able to sort priority mail. Yikes, that that's, doesn't sound good. Tom says, on the positive note, your group is awesome and even a shithead who's been around the block like me, can learn new stuff. Many thanks, Tom, thank you. And you are a valued member. Certainly you're helping out a lot. Chris to crisis, let's just see, yup. Would be nice to relax and get to nature till the end of summer and forget about the COVID era for a while. Yes, that's what I'm trying to do for a weekend is just get up there, see some lakes and, and rivers and just enjoy. I'm gonna eat some white, I'm gonna have a lot of white fish. Oh, I love white fish. Best for less uh, are pallets of books so easy to do that I can jump into a warehouse and do FBA in a snap. Um, you know, it's not like, it's easy. I think it's easy, but FBA in itself is kind of a complicated process. I have videos where I talk about all of it, um, where I show step-by-step -step how to do this. It's all screen shared on my channel. It's called like Blake's first FBA shipment guide, I think, or something like that. 
Um, so if you watch that, you'll be able to, to chug through it. But the first time you do anything, it's going to be hard. Lisa C. lived near Gwyn. Oh, man. I'm going to be driving through Gwyn. I'll, I'll wave. I'll say, Lisa says hi. <laughs> uh, what? No Friday stream? I want my money back. I'm heading to the beach, so that works out just fine. Yeah, everyone, take the weekend off if you can. It's getting, it's, we, we need a break. Even Paris Hilton was spotted in Traverse City recently. The secret is getting out. I know, I gotta move up there. I'm trying to convince my girlfriend to move up there. Uh, the unfortunate thing is, there's not a lot of like, sci she, she's a scientist. There's not a lot of scientist jobs um, up in Northern Michigan, unfortunately. So that kind of is not the best for her career. Lisa C says, you will go right by my old house, sits right off M35. That's the great thing about the UP. There's like six highways. There's two, it's very easy to know where someone lives because there's not many roads. Like you don't, you're down here around Ann Arbor. There's a million roads. A, you know, it's, it's like someone's intestines, it's crazy. But up there, a lot of straight shots, a lot of just grid type roads, I love it. Best for less, what are good prices in your opinion for pallets, gay lords of books? You're gonna wanna pay per pound and you're not gonna wanna pay more than like 20 cents a pound. Um, I wouldn't think. Uh, if you're buying like individual pallets, you're gonna pay more than that. But if you're buying bulk books, and you're getting at least like eight pallets, I wouldn't say pay more than 20 cents a pound. So you're looking at like 100 to 200 bucks a pallet probably. Steven Tyler has been spotted at my beach, Washington coast many times. Secret spot still though, good. I'm glad to hear that they're not ruining it for all of us. These celebrities and debutantes. <laughs> uh... I gotta get out of here, guys. We are uh, just at about 80 minutes. I gotta ship some things out, get home, get a good night rest, because Ashley doesn't know this, but I'm waking her ass up tomorrow at 6 a.m. and tossing her in the car, because we are going up to see uh, to see a beautiful spot in the UP. We're going to Taquamanon Falls. If anyone there in the chat sees me, I will be amazed, but I will say hi to you. If you get a chance, go to the Cut River on US-2. My grandpa used to say that that was um, a, a million dollar bridge over a 10 cent river. <laughs> that was one of the one of the last things he said to me uh, before he lost his mind. Um, he said, the Cut River. We used to call this a million dollar bridge over a 10 cent river. And I thought it was so funny um, because it is. It's a ginormous bridge over, uh, over a, <laughs> it's like a giant gulf or gully, I think. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Now I'm second guessing myself. Michelle says three to eight cents unscanned per book. That's a good deal. Yeah, if you could do that, that's a good deal. Um, Michael Barnhart says, great seeing you, keep rocking. You too, guys. Everyone, uh, let's get out of here right now. Give it a quick thumbs up. Enjoy your weekend, join the Facebook group. Uh, I see, hey, five bucks from Best for Less. And I see Soshi Valencia really trying, really trying hard uh, supporting me. Appreciate that. But again, guys, not necessary. One last ding for the $5 donation, 31 bucks. Certainly enough to get me a few delicious ciders, maybe an entree of pecan whitefish. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be great. And uh, I'll see you guys later. Per usual, you know what I say. Don't be a. I'm gonna when someone says it, I'm gonna I'm gonna um end the stream. I want to see how long the delay is. Wow, the delay is pretty long. There we go, shithead. <laughs> oh man, it's like spamming my screen. This is so funny. <laughs> oh, you guys are great. Per usual, have a great weekend. This is so funny. Goodbye. <laughs>